like a pretty good clientele right mm-hmm. now for the cosmetic stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, ladies love to do stuff to themselves. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the, this eyebrow business? Because I'm not, so, yeah, I know nothing about it. So there's a couple, so it's permanent makeup essentially, okay. right? Or semi-permanent, um, but... How long does, it, does that last? It'll last anywhere from six months to three years. So okay. that's why, you know, I call it permanent makeup because you're putting, um, you know, you're you're putting pigment in the skin mm-hmm. and like anytime that happens, you're going to end up with something there. Like, yeah, for sure. It, even if you let it fade, like it'll, it's going to hang out. So, yeah. so um, basically what my main like bread and butter is... Uh, microblading and that's like you the use of like a small blade comprised of needles to create small incisions in the eyebrow um, to look like hair um, so you're making like superficial hair strokes to create the illusion of fullness and Whoa. then when you know you back away from that person it look you know you can't tell you the can't tell got between you. what's there and what's not there and so it helps a lot of people with like alopecia, you know, who lose their hair, or even just people who don't have a lot of eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I find that the eyebrow is like so important. Like if they put eyebrows, um, if they put eyebrows on the Mona Lisa, she'd probably be a bad bitch. (laughs) 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 Like like she's already cute, you know, like a little smirk. But you put some eyebrows on her, and it's a wrap. (laughs) There you go. So if we, um, yeah, so I I think forever over there at the Louvre. Yes, you know. Natty's going to put some in. eyebrows in the no, fucking... No, don't do that. I would not. Like you said, they're not going to put me on a no-fly list. Uh, yeah. shit. Like, I would never. Uh, <laughs> if anybody out there has the skills, can we please Photoshop that? Somebody do it. Yes. Mona Lisa with a nice uh, really set, of, set of house, brows on her. You know, they got to look real, though. I didn't you know? notice that. She, so she doesn't have eyebrows? No, she doesn't. What the fuck? No wonder. Okay, that's you why see, she's she ugly. she looks so strange. So <laughs> she looks like a weirdo. Um, that's funny. But yeah, so that's what I do. I help people who don't have brows feel a little more confident. Yeah. Um, it's really, you know, and like something about this pandemic has really shown me that like women wear makeup and do all that shit like for themselves at the end of the day. Yeah. Like I put lip gloss on under my mask every day. Like for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. My mask is sticky as yeah, fuck yeah. over here. So it's like... I, I realized that made me realize like we do this for us. Like, yeah, for, for sure. Day, like, for sure. You know? No, I mean, you know, I I remember being like that. Oh, I don't like women with makeup on. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's like it's not for you to fucking it's not for your, care. It's not first for of all, or say it doesn't matter. It's not for you. It's for her. You know? Yeah. So I mean, um, you know, and it is the perfect time to get work done. If you're going to do anything to yourself, it's a great time. Like we ain't going nowhere. So there you go. <laughs> So what do you see in the future of this of this establishment, Sovereign Gallery? Sovereign Gallery. Do you see? You, I know you've been talking about getting another artist. So first, let's talk about the artist you have now. How did yeah, how yeah. did you get up with him? So Nico, we met him. This is the Nico Vargas. Um, he was getting tattooed while I was kind of beginning, mm-hmm. uh, like my career. And I didn't know that he was kind of interested in doing tattoos. So you were tattooing him? I had ta- I had done one tattoo for uh-huh. him, but the guy that I was learning from was tattooing him. A lot. Okay. Yeah, so Nico's covered, and he's been covered since maybe like 18, 19. First, yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a crazy amount of tattoos. His collection in bodysuit was almost done, you know, when he yeah. was like 21. Okay. You know? Wow. Um, so then from there... Later on, he kind of would always come and try to talk to me. I didn't realize he was he was tattooing like friends also on the side, like a couple of his close friends. Yeah. And while I was on the road, he would kind of hit me up for advice. And on one of the trips back, I met up with him, and he was talking about being serious with these tattoos, and that somebody had offered him a job in another shop out here. And I was like, listen, the hard part is getting your foot in the door, because that's what happened to me. I was like, the hard part is getting somebody to teach you. Yeah. You know, and that's actually going to give you the real shot. A lot of people can say they're going to give you a shot, but... Who's going to actually fucking Who do actually it? does it, yeah. it can be tricky. So I was like, take the opportunity, and fucking once you get your foot in that door, kick that door down. Yeah. And go sick. For sure. Go sick. And he took that advice, and I started watching him, you know, from afar while traveling, and watching him grow, and he would hit me up for advice, and I'd give him advice... So when we knew we were coming back here, 
And we were like, if we'd open up a shop, we knew he was going to be the first artist yeah. that I would have to work with. Because he okay. had that attitude. He wanted to get better. And he had that raw talent from his drawings. Got you. So, again, he came in and showed you his sketchbooks. Yeah. And you were like, you obviously like to fucking do this. You like to do this. Okay. You like to draw. This yeah. isn't just a niche thing that you're like, oh, I'll be a tattoo artist. Exactly. Got Plus you. covered, so it's like he's paid his dues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Got he is you. about that life. He was going to conventions just to hang out all the same way Natalie. Network. Before, yeah, Chill before out. he yeah, even yeah. had what I was doing tattoos, he was in those places just in his environment. Yeah. And we've always loved those those places. We definitely missed that from these from the shutdown and all this yeah. COVID stuff, you know, I, I do miss conventions. You always leave them. I've always felt like like recharged. Yeah. And excited yeah. to tattoo again. You know, yeah, being yeah. around other people who are excited about tattoos makes you just fucking wanna just do more. For sure, for sure. I mean that's what happens with us in guest chef dinners. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if, that. you can only do your food for so long before you're like, uh, you know, and then you see somebody else and you're like, OK, now you get reinvigorated with their sort of uh, excitement to do the, the yeah. thing. Um, so are you looking to be sort of an entrepreneur of this field or are you looking just to stay at this shop and kind of travel from here? Or do you want multiple shops all, all across the states? And, yeah, you know, I would say definitely the entrepreneur is is there I definitely that's that's part of me willing to take risk and yeah. do stuff and grow and expand and like what I was saying before coming from like immigrant parents it's like the starving artist was never the the route yeah in fact it was always the exact opposite that was kind of pushed for us to yeah. achieve you know and being a part of hip hop culture and the graffiti and rap it was always Telling you about making a lot of money and doing shit. Yeah. And fucking, hustling. You know, hustling. Yeah. It was hustling. We come from a family of hustlers, and the music that I've always listened to was telling me to hustle. Yeah. So that's always been. So the, the, the drawing's always been on the wall. You know, it's always been there for you. Yeah. Yeah. That was the direction. Like, use whatever you can to fucking make it and put other people on. Exactly. Putting other people on. That's the most important part. Because I said, you know, I always say, like, as a chef, doesn't matter really what you can cook like can can your cooks do the same thing as you yeah and as well as you yeah and then go and prosper in other places and make a career mm-hmm. uh you know for themselves out of the things that you taught them you know yeah. and that's a true test so now you have this with with nico you know and and as you move on here you know because he's sort of like your student no yeah yeah, yeah. so and his work has improved a lot a yeah lot, yeah lot. you were telling me yesterday so as soon as he you know as soon as he came you, you saw yeah and that's what's cool about about um cooking and artistry it's like the finished product like will tell you is there it will tell you if it's good or not yeah and it, you know so that that's definitely uh it's definitely good yeah. do you have any wanna... any, any trips this year or next year, or any conventions that like? Then what's the next no, convention? No, I think the conventions are kind of shut down right now. I know yeah. Golden State is planning on having one. I think it might be in September. Uh huh. You know, Golden State is the one I, I did. In, they usually did it on January, but now I think it's going to be September, and that was in Pasadena. Right? Pasadena, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Outside of LA, that's that one that I went to, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah, gotcha, Golden gotcha. State supposedly is going to have there. So hopefully by the summer the numbers can go back down and the traveling can kind of open back up the way this past summer was a little better. Yeah. Um, if it's like that, we'll do it. But to be honest, I don't think. Gotcha. I think staying put is is the way to the way to go, and just do as much work and try to keep like a. Using social media to keep in contact. With yeah, yeah, body. for sure. You know, like, when this shit's over, then I'm down. I'm fucking go sick. Is there any artist that you want a tattoo from? That you've wanted a tattoo from? Yeah, that you, yeah. Who, who are those people? I mean, Jose. Jose Lopez. Uh-huh. You know, I, I worked with him down there. And I mentioned him already, but he's somebody I would love to get tattooed by. Uh, I've got our friend Alan Padilla, yeah. who's also in uh, Southern California. He's in Long Beach. I would love to get tattooed by him. Our friend Paco from Las Vegas. I want to get tattooed by him. Robert Hernandez. Yeah. Victor Portugal. It's a, it's a lot of dope artists um, out there. I would love to get tattooed. But right now with the traveling kind yeah, of being yeah. shut down, you know, it's tricky. John Duffy. Do you ever have a moment or do you feel like 
you maybe are known by somebody that you looked up to or respected by somebody like you know yeah that you're like that knows you and you're like how the fuck do you know me you know does that ever happen to you or sort of like you know or surprised that no one somebody knows about you you know what I mean or be like how do you you know yeah yeah that that definitely happened it happened uh, in Long Beach actually it was the grand opening of the Raven of the Wolves is the shop where Alan Padilla works okay and so it's Alan Padilla, um, Darren Hall, Carlos Torres, and Sergio Sanchez. Sergio Sanchez. A few other guys, man. I mean, it's just it's just yeah. heavy hitters. Yeah, you don't know his name, but people in the tattoo industry know these people. Know who they, they are, yeah. They are amazing artists, yeah. it's true. And they're painters as well. So when they were opening up their shop in Long Beach, I... We happened to be there, and I was like, let's go to this event. And we go there, and now Jose and all his guys from Lowrider are there. Nico is there. Because anybody from the community showed up. Yeah. So this was a big deal. And while I was there, somebody was like, yo, you're you're Manny Valerio, right? And I was like, oh, shit. Like, you recognize <laughs> me? He was like, yeah, man, you, I followed you, whatever. Like, I'm seeing you here with everybody. And that shit was a trip. That's so cool, man. It was a trip to be in a room full of legends. Yeah. And have somebody know who the fuck I was made me feel amazing. Yeah. Appreciate I mean, it. that validation is, you know, it's not what you're looking for because if, you, if you're if you focused on the art, you know, yeah. in me, I'm focused on the food. It's like if you focus on your craft, people will recognize it. Yeah. You don't need to go out and look for it, yeah. you know? So. Yeah. I, I always said like the goal was to be so good. That it's undeniable. That they have to recognize. They have to. Yeah, they have no choice. So that's kind of been the, the, like a big fuel to it. It's just yeah. Fucking just do the work. Just and do when it. It's your time. You're gonna be ready for it. And awesome. I, I love watching like artist documentaries and really all those kind of like documentary. You watch any like music documentary? These guys who work in like creative fields, and you'll see that it was, it was that it was the nonstop grind and wanting to get good. And then just a random opportunity that just kind of fucking, that's when shit just clicks. Yeah. You know? And that's happened. I've seen documentaries about, like, a woman who was a painter since the fucking, like, 40s. And now she's, like, 80-something years old. And they're finally making this documentary. And we're like, yo, this chick has been a genius. Forever. Forever. Yeah, yeah. And now her work is finally coming out. Now her shit's hella valuable. But she has been consistent as fuck, and the work has been good. Yeah. But now it's her time to shine. I mean, that's a true artist, you know? Just doing it and kind of not expecting to be blown up or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? I've always... I can't remember where I heard it, but it was like, make the art that you want to see. Yeah. You know? And if you like it, there's a good chance another person who's like you is going to like it. Yeah. And that's been dope that I felt... Like, the kind of work that I really try to do, I, I try to treat every tattoo as if it was me getting it. Mm-hmm. So if somebody shows up and wants, you know, a Jaguar, or somebody wants a ship, or or something trippy, like a woman's face. I just did that woman's face with the mountain. Yeah, yeah, I posted Adam that last night. Yeah. She wanted a mind, body, and soul piece. Showed me a couple of things, and I was like, all right, well, what's the version that I would want to get? Yeah. And then I create the design like that, something that I would put on my body. And it happens to be that my clients love that shit too. Yeah, I mean you know? it. That you taught me how to find a tattoo artist. You're like, look at what they're drawing, and if you like their art, then go to them. Yeah. And this brings another point that I want to talk about is is uh, bad tattoo receivers. All right, so you know, it's like your guests, not not yeah, yours, yeah. but guests in the past that have given you a hard time, like. What are the things to stay away from as a person who's going to get a tattoo to not be fucking annoying to your tattoo artist? Because that that, that's yeah. a big one. Natalie's, Natalie's just Natalie's like, I fucking something. got like four right now, bro. Let's go. Facts. Give them no, to me. Give them to me. You know what it is? <laughs> uh, go to, exactly, if you like their art, get something that's like their art. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Don't, like, it happens all the time. Because <laughs> I've been doing it to emails forever. They'd be like, man, I love this portrait work. Can I get some lettering? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and portraits of lettering take yeah. a completely different skill set yeah. to try to yeah. do. You know yeah. what I mean? So, There's like not a single line in this portrait. You, know, and you want and, and all and lines? It's like... <laughs> 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 if, if you're going to go to someone, 
Maybe with some get what music. they do. Get their skill set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, I probably, like the artist won't be offended that you want to go to somebody who specializes in the thing you want. No. You yeah. Um, and if they are, they're not a nice artist. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, I've, I've definitely <laughs> come to that realization.